What's up, fam? Today we're going to be talking about options. And so we're going to be explaining what an option is, what people usually do with them, how to do it on Weeble and on Robinhood, and advice for beginners. So I'm trying to make this as concise as possible. I know a lot of videos out there about options can be anywhere from like 20 minutes to like an hour. So we're going to try and dumb it down completely so even beginners can go ahead and try and if they want to get their feet wet a little bit get some experience doing it and also just learn more about the stock market so that way if you want to make that move in the future you can so let's go ahead and work with the definition I got this definition straight off of investopedia.com uh, check it out if you want to like learn more about investing I guess um, and then I'm just gonna simplify any terms that I think if I was a beginner I wouldn't have really known about right so an option is a contract giving the buyer the right, but not the obligation to buy in the case of a call or sell in the case of a put the underlying asset at a specific price on a certain date. So basically what that means is that when you are putting in for an option, you're essentially putting in a contract. And this contract says that, hey, let's say I put in this contract for whatever company at a $10 mark. That's saying that, hey, I signed this contract that says I have the right to purchase 100 shares of this company at $10. No matter if it goes up, no matter if it goes down, I have the right to buy 100 shares of this company at $10. And uh, most people either go with three options. They either will exercise that contract, which is like I will fulfill my contract, buy 100 shares at that price, I will sell that contract selling that contract is like uh, you're selling it back to the people who sold you the contract in the first place offer the contract and then some people just let the contract expire now that's the least preferred method of course letting a contract expire but we'll get into that more later so usually what people do with options uh, they usually use it for another source of income which is uh, you know, not my preferred method, but people do it, like, it's very consistent. Once you get really good with options, you can, like, consistently put in good options and make money off of it every week if you wanted to. Uh, people do it for speculation, which is more so my realm. I like to, like, learn a lot, so I don't mind losing a little bit of, like, play money, in my opinion, uh, to learn more about it and eventually make more money in the long run, right? And the other they do is hedge risk. Now, for people who don't know, hedge risk is basically, like, uh, like, balancing out other losses with an income so like if i'm losing in my actual shares like oh my shares are losing value but my contract is doing well that's remediating hedge risk it's sort of making a balance between the loss of other shares and growth in that one option so there are two options we'll be talking about today and again this is more so just for beginners is a the call option and the put option so in simplified terms a call option people put in if you think the stock is going to go up. A put option is what people put in if they think the stock is going down. Now more so, I pretty much put my money in companies that I believe in. So 9 times out of 10 I will be putting in calls. Most of the time I don't really put in puts. You can make money on either, right? And so a call option gives the holder the right to buy a stock. And a put option gives you the right to sell a stock. Now that seems a little too simple, right? A call option gives you the right to buy the stock because the stock price is going up. You get to buy it for that cheaper price. You get what I'm saying? Now, put option gives you the right to sell the stock. The stock may drop. This gives you the right to sell that stock at a higher price, not that low price. You get what I'm saying? Okay, so next we'll talk about the bidding versus the asking. So I can just pull up actually something real quick uh, from Weeble. I've got the Weeble desktop app, right? So let's say I go to, I'll pick a random company. Let's say we pick GameStop, right? GME. We'll go to GameStop. Uh, here's GameStop right here, right? Let's say I went to options for GameStop. There's a few things you'll notice right off the bat. Oh, here it is. Uh, here's the ask price right here, and here's the bid price right here. Now, keep in mind all this other stuff right here, like the uh, the prices it was at. Oh, let's go ahead and do just for calls. Call sake. Uh, this, when I do a call, and remember, that means that um, I believe that stock is going up. So, these are all the calls for March 5th, right? Now, remember, options are for 
things being a, a contract that is binded until that very last day, which is March 5th. So up until March 5th, I have those three choices. Let it let it wait out until March 5th and expire, the least preferred. Sell that contract back or exercise that contract. Now here are what we call strike prices in this left uh, left column. Uh, $99, $100, $101, $102, $103, 104 right? Here's the bid price. Here's the ask price. So let's go ahead and go real quick over uh, the difference between the bid and the ask price. So bid price is the highest price somebody will pay for a security versus the lowest price a seller will accept for a security, which is the ask, right? So let's go back. So the highest price somebody will pay for a security in GameStop at this $99 strike price. So remember, $99, this means that no matter if GameStop goes up or GameStop goes down, if I buy a call option for this, that means that, hey, I can buy 100 shares of this company at $99. No matter if it shoots up to 400 again, no matter if it goes down, I have the right to buy those. If it's a call, if it's a put, you no. Know, let's we'll say it's a ninety-nine dollars. If I have this contract, that means that no matter if it goes up to four hundred dollars or GameStop goes down to ten dollars, I have a right to sell GameStop contracts at ninety-nine dollars, one hundred of them. So let's go back to this bid price, right? So here you have the ask and the bid, right? So the bid is the highest somebody will sell for it, right? And you can tell because when I highlight it, it says sell. This is the lowest somebody will buy for it. That's the difference between a bid and an ask price. Now the difference between these two numbers, and you'll see this on every single uh, app. I can even show you in Robinhood as well real quick. Uh, the difference between them is called the spread. The spread is basically the difference between the bid and the ask price. Now, if these two numbers, the bid and the ask, are very close together, that means that there's high liquidity. And I can explain liquidity in a second. If they have a big gap in between them, that means there's low liquidity. So let's say we'll go with my definition of liquidity, right? Liquidity is how fast a stock can be bought or sold without heavily impacting the stock. So Think of it as water. It's not really going to affect too much. If you're throwing punches at somebody in the water, it's not going to change much, right? The water is still going to be water. That's how I think of liquidity. Next, we'll talk about in-the-money calls versus out-the-money calls. And in-the-money calls is basically that us, uh, the when you have the option, right? Let's say we'll go back to the option. This time, we'll use Robinhood. Let's say you do a go back to GameStop. Let's say you do an option for GameStop, right? blah 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 um, let's say we scroll down buying the call right expiring March 5th let's say we go down to that hundred dollar range that we were at before right like somewhere right here uh, oh right here so in the money calls have to do with anything that the current price of that stock has already passed so in this case GameStop is $99 and 50 cents right here so that means anything under $99 is in the money. In the money options means that your contract already has intrinsic value. GameStop, or in this case, whatever asset you have, has already touched those prices before, right? So you're already in a, essentially a better position than these. These that are above the price of GameStop currently are called out of the money calls. They're much riskier, but they also have potential to um, they also have potential to have a higher reward. I think out of the money plays are more risky, in my opinion. Have I done some before and been successful? Absolutely. Um, usually, when I do out of the money plays, I do it barely. Like like let's say like GameStop is ninety nine fifty right now. If I would do an out of the money play, I would probably do the hundred dollar play. Now keep in mind, in the money plays have a higher premium, which I will go over in a couple seconds, uh, versus the out of the money plays. They're cheaper up front. The premiums are a lot cheaper. Like for instance, this one was like 
$21, right, for a $125 call. $35 for an $80 call. You get the difference why that premium would be different? The reason why is because this is essentially a safer option. It's going to cost more to make that safer option versus uh, versus the out-of-the-money call, which is less realistic, right? So for those who don't understand what this price is, I will go over it real quick. So let's say I click a option, right? Let's say I pick the $97.50 call. Now remember, this means that, hey, no matter what happens with GameStop, I have the contract, the option to buy, because it's a call, 100 shares of this company at that $97.50 strike price. So let's say I click this, right? It'll show me all these details, right? I go to the premium. It's right here. You continue. Let's say this. It says that it's a 28.65 uh, premium. Premium is basically the amount you will pay per share to get this contract. So even though it says that the share price is 99.50, Right now, you will only pay $28.65 per share for this option, and that is the same for puts as well. So let's say I put in one option. You see how my max cost has already populated to $28.65? The reason why it populates to $28.65 is because every single contract is bound by 100 shares. So whatever this price is, you're going to do it times 100. You think I'm spending $3,000 on an option contract? Absolutely not. But let's say we pick something that's more up beginner's alleys. Let's pick a Sundial, one of my favorite options. It's a small cannabis company, right? Let's say I want to do options right now. Uh, trade SNDL options. Look at these in the money plays. Why are these in the money? Because the current price of Sundial has already surpassed those two, right? So you don't have to worry about it. Let's say I pick something like this. Now, one that I would do, personally, let's say um, I would do, oh, I think that SNDO will hit $2 within the two, next two weeks. So I will pick a different date, a way out date, uh, March 19th. Go ahead and click the $2 one, right? Add a contract. It'll give me the details about it. Um... Uh, So, if it's $2, right, it's a $2 call, I'm saying that I believe Sundial will go up to that price by uh, March 19th, and if not, I will sell the contract. Um, the total cost, in this case, will be $20. Let's say I continue, look at this, limit price, blah, 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 let's say I want one contract. You see how it populated from $0.20 cents to $20? That's because it's 100 contracts. 20 cents times 100 is 20. So I would pay $20 for this contract. And if Sundial hits $2 before the March 19th, then that's okay. Like, I made my money. I can sell my contract back. I don't have to wait. I don't have to wait all the way until that day. I made money off of that contract, right? It's the same thing with puts, but in reverse. Let's say we have a put here. Uh, I think that Sundial will go down by March 19th to a dollar. I have this, right? So let's say I want one. It says you can select up to one option. Let's say I want that one. It's still the, uh, let's say I want that one. It'll say review order, blah, blah, blah. Okay, but obviously I don't have no funds in there. Uh, but it's the same thing. I believe that it's gonna go down no matter if Sundial goes to 50 cents or 60 cents or whatever. Uh, I get to sell it at that higher price, that $1 price, because I knew it was going to go down. So I get to sell it at that higher price. That's the whole point of a put. So I'll go ahead and show you real quick how you do that in Webull as well. So let's say I go to Webull, and I'm going to pick a stock that I actually like. Um, Ford. I did an option in Ford recently. So here are the options for Ford. So let's say I think that... Uh, by March 19th, uh, Ford will be back at $11. So here we go. The bid, the ask price, notice how close it is. That means that the liquidity for Ford is very high. The bid and the ask price, you can look at those differences right there. This is how much premium it would cost per contract uh, 
to buy this option. So if I wanted to buy this option, it's a call. 98 cents, so I know already in my head it's gonna be $98 for this call. If I go to the buy tab, you see how when you click it, it goes buy or sell. I would just click buy, right? Then you go down to your orders, which would be over here. Then you have your limit price. That means that uh, at this price, when it touches this price again, it's at this price right now, but on Monday, when it opens up, whenever it touches 1170 again, it will uh, enable that contract. And I buy it for how much? That $98 go down I would click um, well, I would click buy it would say purchase right there instead of unlock trading and I would be able to hold that contract I do have two contracts right now which I can show you guys real quick um, let's say I go to my contract uh, my position watch list my position I have two contracts in right now a Macy's $15 call and I have an IDX $4 call so if I go to this call right here uh, 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 I have this call in right here. Let's go back. One sec. Okay. So for me, I put in this position right here. I have the, this $15 call, uh, and it's out for this week because I knew that the market was going crappy last week, so I didn't want to put in a Macy's call um, during the week of literally a market correction. But anyways, I digress. Oh, I'm sorry. This is the, uh, this would be the strike, I mean the price, the premium. So that's the premium for this. Notice how when you put dates out more, it goes up. These prices start going up because it, they're safer. Usually when you're doing options, the safer it is, the more it's going to cost you. It is what it is. Um, yeah, but that's pretty much how you do options my advice for beginners which I'll give real quick which is the most important part of this entire thing um, would be do not use your rent money for options and most people think I'm joking but no I'm serious don't take money out of what you're supposed to be putting somewhere else to do options options are for made money like extra capital if you have it and you want to try because these are more risky like you're more likely to occur not paper losses like when you're down in the market that's just a paper loss right but with options it's not really like that like you have an expiration date like you have a no crap your contract will expire this week and so you have to watch out for that do not use your rent money on options it is for extra capital if you are a beginner do not use your extra money for it if you have if you do options usually go for less volatile or highly catalyst driven stocks that's just my opinion you know, I'm not a financial advisor, but wouldn't it make sense to do options on uh, stocks that you know are doing not just well, but just consistent? Like, I'll give you one more option real quick. Let's say uh, we go to AMC. Let's say we go here and let's pick a company, um, Fuel Cell. I haven't picked a probably weird one right now. Obviously, they did well right here, but look how consistent this is right here. Let's say I get my drawings out. Look how consistent this is right here. You see that? Wouldn't that make sense to do an option for that? Like, look at this price right here. Uh, this price. You see this? Like, how consistent that is. That's where you would want something. That's where you would want to do an option. A safe in the money option. Like, let's say this line was hovering around $2.250. Wouldn't it make sense to do a $2 option while it's consistent like that? It's safer. It's more likely to make you money. Uh, don't get greedy, you get what I'm saying? And highly catalyst driven stocks. So these are stocks where if some good news comes out, that's what I mean by catalyst. If good news comes out, then it affects the stock greatly or not so greatly, but that's the two stocks I usually go for. So a highly catalyst driven stock I can think of right now is Zometica. Um, would I do an option on Zometica in the future? Yes. Sundial is another one. Fuel Cell is another one. Um, another one I can think of is APXT. Uh, these are just companies that I can think of that are very catalyst driven and will do well uh, after putting in options, right? Or after hearing some good news. Pick companies that you support. I pick, I support marijuana companies, I support animals, I support uh, environmentally friendly companies, I support food, I love food, like 
and I, for example, I did a call on Ford. I ha I drive a Ford Fusion. Of course, I'm gonna put an option for Ford. I if I believe in the company, I'll put an option in, because it's companies you don't mind losing money in, right? And then next is be patient. Put it. I put in a two week minimum for like 99 percent of my options. That's because like if you put it in for the first week, like you're more likely to make more money, right? But uh, you're also more likely to lose your money faster. Like, if you never can predict it, so if you have a bad week, just, like, you won't be able to recover from it until the next week when you put in a new option. So, for example, Macy's had a okay week this week. I put in a $15 call for Macy's, and last week, uh, it didn't go up. It didn't go up. I was down all week. Most people were down because the entire S&P 500 was down. But I knew that... And these trends, like for example, I'll show you real quick. These trends in the S&P 500 were not looking right. Like, look at this. Let's say the S&P 500 was down, right? The second it hit this trend right here, like this started breaking. Like, look at this. Look at this level of support. Like, let's say I zoom in a little bit. This level of support right here. The second that it broke that, I got hesitant. I got very hesitant. Because I was like, it's been doing well for all these months. And now, look, right here, it started breaking. And I was like, something bad is happening. So anyways, once it broke that, I was like, mm, uh, I'm going to hold out. Give it one more week. I wasn't going to put out for a month because I'm impatient and I'm greedy. But I was going to put out for that week. But this is my take on options. I tried to dumb it down as much as possible. Um, Thanks for everyone supporting me. I appreciate it. I'm going to keep videos coming. I sort of like using this style, so I might more. And then let me know if you want me to show you guys how to do, like, analysis of, like, stocks and stuff. Like, how to analyze charts and stuff like that. And I'll keep it up. But anyways, I appreciate everybody. Uh, thanks a lot for everything. And, yeah. Peace.